Mom? Yeah? Can you come up? I gotta pack one travel Barbie. For me, I like the, the black and white. I wanted to take the maid too, but if yeah. I break the maid, then it's wow. really hard to replace the maid. There is a slice of humanity, you know, that acts like robots. So everybody has a default, you know, robotness to them. I showed this picture to the, uh, to the guys and said that was my girlfriend. They really believed that was a real person, that was Bianca. And then when I told him, he said, wow, not one of them wouldn't try the doll. What I want, I think, what a lot of people want, is to be happy. And I think people find different ways of being happy. I'm going to take the maid. It's my favorite toy. <laughs> so I'll bring it, because then it'll remind me of you. OK, there you go. There you go. <laughs> the Silkstone maid gets to go to convention. She needs underwear. <laughs> I gotta put underwear on her. Uh -huh. Hello. Come on in. I'm not really a doll collector, but I buy old dolls to remake in the form of robots, and I'm sort of a robot collector. All these are made by hand. I took like a week to make a piece. This was a very early one. Back then, robots had gas tanks. <laughs> At one point, there were over a hundred of them. Now there must be, it's gotten beyond counting. I could do the archaeology of my life all the way back to 1969, right here. Someplace, I got the Blade Runner gun. This got me off of jury duty a couple of times. This is my broken sink, but I have to get the drain pipe fixed before I can turn the water on again. There's a bunch of robots I was saving. Some of them are sort of special robots. This one's Pussy Boy. The only uh, robot with a kind of backstory just came to me in a dream. Oh, damn. Hello? I'm uh, running a little late. I got lost in Manhattan. Well, that worked, that worked out good, because I'm not, not, not going to get that no picture, though. So oh, oh that's good. As well. I, was that okay? I was worried you were calling from the B&B &B now. I was so embarrassed. We're on our way to Hershey, Pennsylvania for our fifth annual Doll Lovers Meet. This year we have, for, I think, close to 20 people who will be here over the weekend. And I expect over 30 dolls will be on display. You brought my new doll? I did. Yeah, she's been right here. That's she's cool. Right next to me. OK, I'll see you soon. All right, talk to them. Hi, Bianca. And that's she, she collects dolls, too. <laughs> yeah, she does. She does. Touch the tummy. Oh, yeah, that's the tummy I need. Yeah, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? Dad, come on. The biggest reason why I first started collecting dolls is because we moved away from all my friends and all my family. Colin and I, we didn't have a very close relationship at that time. You know, we were just parents and we were together, but we weren't really friends. Zach, come on. Hey. Zach was off to nursery and I was at home and I didn't really know what I was supposed to do. And Colin was at work. When Colin got home, every night he'd be on Xbox Live talking to his friends and I wasn't getting anywhere with him. I wasn't getting any attention that I wanted. And that's how it all started, really. I'm really nervous because I don't know what to pack. I don't know what kind of clothes to bring. I'm not going to bring like lace up shoes. It's going to be too much work. So I'm going to bring all of my espadrilles and flip flops for the hotel. I'm going to the Barbie convention. I want to do this on my own because I want to experience being away and I wanted it to be just for me. I don't know okay. if I should bring this. 
It's long sleeve. It's so hot for that. I know, but at night, it's Burberry. Any bomb? Should I bring a pair of dress pants? This one? Yeah, that one is nice. No, these are Anibos. I don't want it to sound like I'm being greedy, but I just want it to be about the relationship that I have with Barbie and the people who also share that love for Barbie. <gasps> you know what I need to pack? Um, my pillow. Uh-oh. Oh, that's not gonna fit in here, Anibal. I don't have any room to bring Barbie. <laughs> I know, it's only two days, but you get there and you have to change. And then in the morning, you have to wear an outfit and then you have to change. Like, it's not just one outfit for the whole day. That's, that's ridiculous. Okay, now, this is the messy part. I've been a photographer most of my life and also worked on commercials for 30 years. And I started doing this movie about analog versus digital robot war. But that turned out to be um, hard to stage. This is what I used to shoot on. And this is as far as you can reach, because you got to be able to reach everything in stop motion. I'm used to working on stages where you could do that stuff. But at home, it's more difficult. One day I thought, oh, we'd do some sex jokes, and the movie sort of took a right-angle turn. This is the, uh, the Iron Hole Porno Theater. This is the shot that took three days. This movie's kind of short on plot, and it's simple because there's no dialogue. Well, no understandable dialogue. You know, they talk, but it's like robot gibberish. Some people think it's sexy, you know, which is sort of made to not be sexy. It, it represents pornography, but it isn't actual flesh. It's like literature, you could write about it, you know, but it's not the real thing. And animating this stuff is sort of like, you know, playing with dolls. Sometimes the real world can be a bit boring, so you kind of have to pretend. I do a lot of playing with my Halloween dolls because I get to pretend, you know, like I'm a photographer when I'm taking photos of them. Or, you know, I'm a fashion designer. It's all stuff that I wanted to do when I was younger. One day I came home from work early because I'd started to notice that we didn't have as much money as we used to. So, I'm hoping that's a postman. <laughs> we had savings, you know, not very much because we've always struggled, but we, we were trying. Hello. I'm going to sign for a young yeah. lady, please. Thank you. This is some doll clothes that I ordered. <laughs> I came home from work, walked up our stairs, and kaboom. Doll City. There must have been about, I don't know, eight or nine of these dolls, and she's sitting there, and they're all out all over the floor with various outfits and shoes. She has loads of different designs of clothes, and I said to her, could you please make me something like that, but in this colour? When I married her, I said that I would never leave, but it was such a, a large amount of money. Um, in about three weeks, I think she'd spent. And a purple version which I love, because I have adult purple eyes. <laughs> I don't know what to do, really. What, what can you do? We've got two children, and it would be nice for them to have better things than they have. But we can't do that, because she's spending everything we have on dolls. This is my little Barbie shrine. Mostly vinyls on this side. Right now in our collection, we probably have about 500. Silkstone and club dolls on this side. There's the NRFB, which is the Never Remove From Box Collectors. Um, and that's myself. When you remove them from the box, then I think you lose that magic. Because I was able to capture this love for Barbie after so many years, I don't want it to change. I want it to remain kind of intact, like in the box. I started collecting when I noticed that they came out with a doll that I had as a child. That would be this Peaches and Cream doll. And this was the first Barbie that my parents bought me when I was 10, 11, 12. Barbie was buried away because I didn't want anybody to know that, yeah, you know, you're, you're gay. So I, I was like, you know, burn all the evidence. 
and only until I could be true to myself and not have to hide and lie, then I could bring her back out. And that's what I did. But I brought her back out full force. Now she's like a little menage a trois. She gets, she gets involved. When they first came here, they brought uh, all these dolls, you know, and it was kind of different. Man, there's a lot of boxes here. He explained to me, you know, uh, about things and what they do. Merry Christmas. That's yours. I kind of knew what was happening, you know, with the dolls. He sits them in the parlor, you know, and one year all the girls had afternoon tea. Well, they just sit around and talk, you know, and dress up their dolls and or mannequins, however you want to put it. I had to try her out, so I tried her out one night, I tried her twice more. <laughs> My husband wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't have any love dolls. He has me, that's enough. To each his own. The world is made up of all kinds of people. Do you see, it's a piece of plastic. I don't like every single that's doll that's ever That's not a person well, that doesn't have a name. It doesn't have feelings or emotions. Well, I care about it. But, Me too. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> um, I work in retail in um, men's fashion at the moment. It's barely above minimum wage, you know, um, 40 hours a week, you know, standard stuff. Um, and yeah, that's why, that's why we have so much problems with the, with the dolls and the money and the, you know, that, that kind of scenario. The postman arrives every day with a different parcel, a different package. Yeah, and when you say stuff like that, I realise, hang on a minute, you need to rein it in a bit. Not, not rein it in a bit, you need to take a massive step back and just look at what you're actually doing. It's difficult, you know, when you want to do things and you can't because you haven't got enough money, and then a new doll arrives every day, it's, you know. And eventually our children aren't going to be old enough to understand that. How many do it be delivered at the moment that That's you've got on layaway? Or that, don't, don't, come on, that you've got on layaway. Four. Four. <laughs> you only knew about three. <laughs> I love my little family, it's lovely. I never thought my life would turn out like this. Not, not ever. Um, I always assumed that it would be a riotous mess of drink and violence. But, um, and <laughs> luckily, luckily it's all turned out all right, you know. Isn't that right? No? Just, if only Mummy wasn't insane, that's the only problem. <laughs> we have an understanding of what our, our guidelines are in terms of collecting, you know. If we have to choose between eating and Barbie, I'm going to choose eating as opposed to Barbie. Even though I have a true passion for her, but I have other obligations as well. A lot of us are probably really depressed about something. And Colin doesn't understand. He's like, what do, you, what do you have to be depressed about? You know, you have family, you have this, you have that. And I think, yeah, I know I can't explain it, but maybe we just sort of have that sort of personality where you, you need something. That's almost the regular proportion yeah, there. Yeah, that's kind of nice. I think that's a... Uh... Bianca approves of that, right, Bianca? Yeah. Yes, it's more my size. You know, doll collecting isn't so much about the dolls as it is about the clothes, because people don't collect naked dolls. Always display your dolls respectfully and properly, and nobody wants to look at a doll that has stains or anything like that. There are people that have said, ooh, I can't believe that you would show your sex toy in public. You know, I don't put my vibrator out there. Well, I'm very glad, ma'am, that you don't, because I really don't find anything attractive about your vibrator, but this is not a vibrator. This is a, a, you know, an artificial replica of a real human being. I'm gonna put her in my, in my carry-on. There's no way I would ever put her in my suitcase. I'm going to the Barbie convention, and I'm excited and nervous at the same time, so I don't know um, what to expect when I get there. It's a different kind of atmosphere than coming out of my home atmosphere where, where like all of my 
relatives and stuff, they know exactly what they come and expect here. So they all have come to accept it. So now I'm going outside. So it's like stepping out of the box. But I got to think about that on the plane, because now I got to think about getting mouthwash. <laughs> And Nibo and I have been together for 10 years. We live at my parents' house, and in terms of having supportive parents, I'm lucky. I live in a basement. You know, I have a big house, but most of my time is on the basement. My parents were in, in the master bedroom, but we needed a little bit more room and a little bit more privacy. They said, Mom, I need a, you know, a bigger room. I said, can you stay with that one there? You know, I want your room. I have a relationship with Mike different than I have my, with my other son. My other son is more for my husband, you know, confident with a dad. Mike was more with mom. I'm comfortable. If I have a problem, I go Mike. They don't pay me nothing. Not even a neighbor, not even Mike. I pay the bills. I still pay his car insurance. If you work a full-time job, you don't have time to dedicate to your collection. Keeping it clean, keeping it organized. I even have more time to play. We don't pay rent, and it was very gracious of them to give up their space for us. of round things that I collect for robot making. <laughs> it's actually, it's over there. And this is the robot to be department. I have no idea what this one is. In the end, it won't matter. I carve them to unrecognizability. All aspects of the original doll are gone, you know, except where their joints move. They wear the robot costumes as if, you know, that's what they were. And they play a robot character, which is no character at all. A lot of my dolls, I pretend that, for instance, the blonde ones are me. I love the dolls to have different personalities. And sometimes, you know, I have different personalities. Most of the elements, if you look, they're not really smiling. And I think maybe I like that so much because deep down that is how I feel. <laughs> I do my makeup like a doll, because life is a stage, and I think that you should dress up and, you know, just... Nobody's going to notice you unless you, you know, make an effort and just sort of try and stand out. I really like her because she's got pale skin as well, and I put eyelashes on her. There's something about her face. She's moody. I don't know how long she's going to stay here. She might move out. <laughs> When I got Bianca, she struck me like she came right out of a London bombing raid in, from World War II. She was in such bad shape. She looked so sad, and I felt bad for her. I just look at Bianca and I think of, you know, poor girl, and how many poor girls are there out there that, you know, they've left home, and they're on the, on the road trying to get on their own, and they're not doing very well, and they've gotten into drugs or this and that. And I think you get all of those kind of things. You, and again, it's always fantasy, it's always thoughts, you know, because it, it always comes back down to the reality that it's just a doll sitting here. There we go. We're here. Yes. See you guys on Sunday. Okay, okay. see ya. Bye. I already missed him last night. I wake up like two o'clock in the morning and feel like so empty the bed already. Yes. But it's gonna be fast, it's gonna be. That is gonna go so fast, so yeah. Just go and enjoy. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, I'll see you in a I wonder you bit. have fun there. That's, that's all, all you right. It's your dream come true, right? All right, guys, go before okay. I start crying. It's only gonna be three days. It's no point in us getting all okay. teary-eyed and weepy. I'll see you guys. I didn't think he was gonna get that upset. 
it's a, it's a break. I'm gonna be free, not that I wanna necessarily be free, but uh, it's good to have like a, a space to breathe and hopefully it's not gonna go by so fast. I'll have time to enjoy it. Soon we'll be in the world of Barbie. <laughs> because it feels like I've been here before. Any Barbies today? The air smells like expensive cologne. I didn't bring any Barbies. No? Next week. OK, next I week promise, here. I, I bring you the whole box. You stole enough heads off my dolls. Anybody will tell you that. The guy over there was just talking. He did her the same thing. He takes all the heads, all the parts off. I know how to fix Barbies, but I don't break them on purpose. <laughs> See? He looked over and he saw me. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, wow. Even the mannequins look really good. The eye, the hair, the inspiration is definitely there. I received more new dolls in the last two weeks than I owned. I've got the Elf, I've got the Ruby, and I've got the... Uh, four Woods. The Four Woods. And I've got two more Teddy Babes, too. I think most of my delight comes from just looking around, seeing all my girls. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it makes me feel like... Well, there's a lot that goes into the silicone all of doll world or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like having a little harem, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is, like my own harem. Now the trick is telling your wife about this. Oh, no, she, knew, she, she knows. <laughs> My wife and I, we're both very complicated people. We have had another in-depth discussion, and it just comes right back around full circle. No, I, like, I love you. I don't, like, we, I like, like to do this, do this, this. I just don't want to be on a TV. So she says, I said, well, yeah, but you do have a problem with the dolls. No, no, I don't, she said. I don't have a problem with the dolls. OK, you don't have a problem with the dolls, but you've had made remarks that every once in a while you make a remark, you know, like the dolls are more important than you. but. What she's really saying is that the doll community is taking up my time. I think I'll have questioned sometimes whether I love the dolls more than him, which I think is ridiculous, but I think obviously me spending time with the dolls and not with him, he, um, he gets jealous. This is me and Colin on our wedding day. We've been married a year now, but it feels like forever. <laughs> We met when I was 18 and he was 23, and soon after got pregnant with Zach. And then we had Daisy a year ago. If I'm having a bad day, as soon as my children have gone to bed, I'll go and talk about dolls, and that actually makes me really happy. You feel alone and everything else. That's another really, really big reason why I, you know, I really love going on the internet and finding the whole doll community. Most of my friends are older double my age or more than that. I kind of hope that maybe some of them see me as a daughter figure, because I worry about my mom not being here. And I think, what on earth am I going to do when I don't have that person, you know, higher than, you always have to have someone higher. And when you don't have your parents around, what on earth are you going to do? Like, who do you talk to? Who do you ask people for advice and stuff? And I think these, these, um, these older women have been really good with me and helped me through a lot of things, you know? It's not all about dolls. I don't think it's the number of dolls that you collect that determines what kind of a collector you are. I just think it's the, what you have, how you take care of it, and how you appreciate what you have. This is amazing, amazing. I, I I'm in awe that there's just so much. Very nice. I love the outfit. She's in my room. <laughs> it's so pretty. These are the Mad Men, two Mad Men. Really wanted that one, but I didn't want to pay $80 for her. I need to have this outfit. I love this screen. I think it's so beautiful. It's perfect. I have to be very careful about how many I get, because I got to remember how many I can take back with me. So I'm going to get that one, too. I'm on purchase three. 
thank you. I think I've only gone to two, three hallways and it's so far down there still. I saw Bianca and sex was the first thing on my eyes. I can't wait to try this, this must be something else. Until she arrived and I looked and she was not anatomically correct. I just spent $4,500 to land a mannequin. I got an email from the creator that said, I can put the real back in your real doll. So I drove all the way across the continent to California and uh, we got there and he delivered his promise and Bianca is a real, real doll. Some people make the Elowins look quite sexual, I don't. They're not interested in boys at the moment. They want to explore life <laughs> and have fun. I think deep down inside, that's because I probably always want to be a young girl. When I was going to a youth group, somebody said to me, you know, you are like a flower. And she gave us a rose. And she's like, I want you to touch the petals. I want you to sniff the rose. I want you to look at the rose and just, just really admire it. And everybody in the group was doing that. Then she got another rose that hadn't been touched or whatever. <laughs> and she was like, here you go, which one do you want? And obviously, the people didn't want the rose that everybody had been messing about with, which really always stuck with me. When I make a robot, I don't really care about other people's interests in the genitalia. I just put it on because when it turned into a porno movie, they need, they need a genitalia. All the classical sculptures have it, you know, so why not? Nobody ever thinks like Michelangelo's David needs to lose its genitalia. Although, you know, you see in museums, a lot of people broke off the genitalia of Roman era sculptures, you know, because they think, you know, hmm, the little dick is pointed at me. <laughs> Through here, this is the dark room. Oh yeah, this is me and Debbie Harry in the early 70s. And uh, oh, those are my old lampoons and magazines that I published stuff in. Oh, and uh, this is me, my little sister, and Trix backstage at Star Trek V Animation Unit. I've been in love with Trix since, uh, what, the late 60s, early 70s. I had thoughts about children, but I, you know, I somehow knew I could never afford you know, that, so, so I was careful not to collect any. <laughs> Trix lives in Jersey City, but I go out there, you know, every now and then. Hi, Jimmy. How you doing? Hi, hey, how you doing? That's my hardware store. There are obvious criminals that work there. They don't want to be photographed. Last time I went out into the wilds of New Jersey, I got myself lost, and I couldn't find a telephone anywhere that were all removed. I wandered around for hours until some nice lady let me call on her cell phone. Yeah, I did. Hiya. Uh, Hiya. Uh, hello. Michael and I met at college. We met at NYU. At NYU. Yeah. I saw Michael walking down the hallway with a Fellini button, and mm. I said, hmm, interesting. And we sort of fell in love. I mean, and that, I, would you say? Mm hmm Yeah, I'd say. And so we just, that was it. You know, we were, we became, we had a relationship, and um, it was, and it's lasted to like, like, what, like 40 years 45 or something? 45 years, yeah. Here's Mike as a little boy. And that's his mom, Lois, and his granddad and his uncle, Red. Mike's family, they loved, adored Mike. They just knew that he was going to be, you know, unique, and they, they, they treasured that. Every year, Michael would send um, Christmas cards. And what he, he scratches the negative and then drops it on the floor, stomps on it, prints I, it. I don't actually scratch the negative. I scratch <laughs> a, an overlay <laughs> to sandwich with the negative because, you know, 
I, I, no, actually, I have scratched yeah, negatives. Yeah, you have. I've scratched <laughs> negatives where the setup was still there and I could run another you have. roll of film through if I ruined it, me. you know. Mike, you know, he's sitting on this fortune of, of hand-carved robots, and he knows he goes to the flea market and he sells one or two when he wants to, or he has collectors come. And I know they have genitals, I know they have boobs, I, I can see all of that, but it doesn't register. I see them as Mike's art, and they're brilliant. You know, obsessive, but brilliant. These dolls are like taking a Picasso that's very bendable, shapeable, and dressable, and you can put it in any atmosphere and, and make something brand new and beautiful out of it. That's, that's what I do. They really are some of the best models in the world. Most patient. They're very patient. Uh, they don't get too cold. They don't get too hot. They don't get thirsty. They don't have to go to the bathroom. They, they don't, don't get bitchy. They don't, they don't ever want to raise. Do you have sex with your dolls, too? No. Never? Every man's tried a sex doll. <laughs> what photographer hasn't wanted to have some time with his models on the other side, you know? I've been asked that question okay. before, and, uh, and I'm, okay. I'm yeah. a little shy about it because it's not gentleman-like to, to, to kiss and tell, you know? Matt had this, these, these brand new dolls here, and they were all like calendar girls. Me and my wife love their look. So I got two of the Decembers. The, the twins are both Miss December. And it, it, it was about as much as purchasing a vehicle. Believe it or not, it was a, a home equity loan that I got. And it's been regular payments for like four years. I, I didn't know it would, it would become such a, a part of our lives that we liked it so much that we, were, that we would dive into it this deep. It's like women don't like to be treated like objects. But we take objects and treat them like women. It's a very table-turning thing, and it's a respect for the species kind of thing, if you, if you want to think about it in some ways. And women should feel honored yeah. to be to have creations like this at this level. It's not like a blow-up doll is one thing, but these are art. I love this one. She almost looks like she could be in Carnival in Brazil. Yes. I love uh, fantasy words. I love rock and roll. And I mix this, this words. It's almost like a little bit punk. Yes, kind of course. Of. I love, you know, porcelain black Lady Gaga. The, or yes, Katy yes. Perry. So, um, I can, maybe Lady Gaga can even like put yes. one of these on <laughs> one day. The Barbies, I don't think it's nothing wrong with the Barbies. He likes it. This is a number one in the original box, and this is a number two. Oh my God, wow. Some kids like drugs. He doesn't like the drugs, you know? He likes Barbies. Did you see her? I have Pepper. I'm she beautiful? Amazing. I prefer him to look Barbies than to go on drugs. Don't collect what you think is going to be worth money oh. down the road, because it's not necessary. So always collect what you like, so if you still have it, you still like it. The robots that I make, people consider them art, you know, well, you know, they are sort of artfully made, but they're basically commercial dolls, you know, that are recarved. They're inanimate objects disguised as robots imitating humans. Michael is totally in the moment, you know, when he's working. I mean, all artists are, but with Michael, he only has this one life, except for when he'll do another job, you know, but short of that, it's all about this. He's created a world where he pretty much can live however he wants to live. And I don't know that he planned that. It's just sort of happened. I was looking at your beard. Do you remember when I used to cut it? Oh, is it scraggly? A little bit. Yeah, you know, I, I, I sometimes I, I uh, gather it together and just cut the bottom off, but right. you know, it 
the edges are probably longer than that. Yeah, I think they could use a little bit of a cut. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. There's a lot of things in their early lives that influence us, even you know, before we even are old enough to realize how much that influence is going to be. I think my mother spoiled me after I lost my older brother. Because he died at 13, I was always scared that I was going to go away or die when I was 13. I did become the, the sort of the class clown, the guy that was always being foolish and walking into walls and things just to try to make my mother laugh and happy because she wasn't happy. So, hmm. yeah. When I, I was growing up in like high school, I used to shoot movies in eight millimeter. And I was imagining these sexual movies where you get to feel up a girl with beautiful tits. And, you know, my dad discouraged me from doing that. And, you know, it probably wouldn't have worked out for the best anyway. And then in 2001, my dad died. And that was about, you know, when I think back to about it, it was around the time where the robot project, you know, metamorphosized into the sex life of robots. And all this is subliminal, you know, sort of, my dad was no longer there to disapprove of it. So I wonder if I had held off on that idea and his disapproval, you know. Bean. Ah, uh, Mr. Rogers. Kevin Beacon. Dr. Seuss. I know she's here. You will find hers. It's going to be exciting to see Barbie's star on the Walk of Fame, because that's a part of her history. Edgar Bergen. Her journey from where she started off to, to where she is now. And I'm going to be part of that. The disappointment I got from Mike was that I want him to get a job that he can go forward. Come on over. Zoltar will give you a wealth of wisdom. It's not like in 50 years you're going to sell Barbies and you're going to have money then. At least do something with your life. I cannot find it. Let me ask someone. I said, Mike, you have college two years, you have school, you know how to write and read. Go to school, finish what you have to finish. I'm looking for Barbie's star. I think she has a star, I'm not too sure. He says, someday, Mom, I'm still young, so. They don't have one. There's no Barbie. <laughs> Knowing that she doesn't actually have a star is a little bit disappointing, but we'll, we're going to make it work. All right. Right by Liberace. We're going to give her her own. She's going to have her own walk of fame. Yeah, there we go. Here's a couple of teddy babes. They keep the bed warm for me. So you just sort of hide between them. Now just think about this, think about therapeutic. You sort of put the arm under your head like this, and you put this one around, you know. It sort of drags your nose right in between the boobs, keeps your nose warm. So I'll try to use the face to, uh, to block the light because I'm a night person, so I wake up in the morning and it just gets too bright. If you're in physiotherapy, they'll give you something to put your pillow to put your arm over, right? Also, they'll tell you to, you want to, they'll put something between your knees, so. I can rationalize anything, right? So I can give you a rational argument that this doll is therapeutic for sleeping. You can have these companions waiting in multiple places at once and they all look the same. <laughs> and it's still much cheaper because they can wait in a box. Yeah, that, that would be a sleeping position there. It's actually not that, that comfortable to eat breakfast in bed. But I, I think I'm managing. I'm suffering, though, to get my coffee because it's so far away. Got it. Last night was the first night's sleep. And it was very relaxing, actually, like very calming and very soothing. A little bit on the lonelier side. I've only been gone for, I know, one day, but it's just so different. It's so different. I've been outside of home, but always with a needle and always, you know, in the same bed. Like, I'll have a nap. 
without him sometimes, but never at night. When I left, it was hard, but I could tell that he was, you know, genuinely upset um, because we weren't, you know, gonna see each other. I just miss him. And it didn't hit me when I got here. It hit, hit me. I just need a minute. I used to cry like this before uh, when I didn't have anybody because I never thought that I, I never thought that I would find somebody that I could live with and be with. So I, I apologize for crying uh, because I don't want to take the focus away from Barbie because this is our special time together. And uh, I think what hasn't made me break down like completely and say, I want to go home has been the fact that I'm here to, you know, do something that really tugs at my heartstrings and makes me happy. When I was younger, my mom used to really enjoy buying dolls for me and my sister. And when I was at school, she would actually play with my Barbies in the house. I couldn't cope with having two young children and a house to look after. We had a much bigger house in South Africa. And when they went off to school, I would play dollies and I'd move everybody around to do what I wanted them to do. And the mommy doll could stay in bed reading a book. And I made daddy doll do all the work, <laughs> which wasn't the real life at all. <laughs> Sometimes I find that I am playing with dolls when I should be doing the washing or the tidying of the house. I'd rather be playing with dolls. <laughs> we want to have a look at my play school. Look at that. So that's you over there. And it's just Daisy when she's a bit older. And that's your new baby, Lily, over there. I think I'm going to have another girl, and her name's going to so be Lily Marie. I play in advance as well. Like a prophecy. I put it, it down, <laughs> but it often works out. You know, having a young baby, I'm having so much fun with her, but I have found that since having her, I have started collecting more. There's some pottery houses I made. It's just grown over now. It's got a bench in it. See the bench that I made? <laughs> it, it's got to the point now where I look at the dolls and I, I don't think, I don't go, wow, I'm really proud of it. I look at them and I think, gosh, what have you done, you know, is that, that's, yeah, yeah sometimes I do, yeah. Some, oh. especially when Colin talks to me about, like, oh. how much money I've spent and stuff, and then I, mm -hmm. and then I think I don't want to look at them. No, but you don't listen, that's a problem. There was a time not so long ago when Debbie's mum um, helped out Debbie uh, with some money, um, and Debbie's mum still doesn't know that all that money she gave her went on dolls. So... Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. <laughs> I really don't want you in debt. No, I know. Because that's not going to make you happy. No. Me. These dolls can cost towards $10,000, which is too much money just for sex. But I'm 58, and these dolls, they do make me feel a little younger. And I do know that if I were to lose my wife, my doll, Bianca, she couldn't ever replace my wife. But she could help to address some of the loneliness that I'm feeling from that, you know? Yeah. Phoebe, my dog, provides the interaction that I can't get, you know? So she will respond to my voice and to my touch. And she will love me, you know, like, you know, unconditionally. Jump! There's limits to how far you can take a pet. But if I have her and then I have Bianca as sort of something to reflect on, then maybe that's going to help me get over the hump until I meet somebody else, if I ever meet somebody else. Let's go in the house. 
Hey, close the door. Born on a burn? This is the basement. You know, it's really big. It's got loads of potential. I think I'd probably like to put a nice carpet down and paint it and make it really nice. Make it a bit more like a nice girly craft room. The basement that we've got at home, Debbie's having this idea of putting dolls in it or a shop of some sort. I could use it as a workshop to start making the doll furniture and maybe even have my sewing machine and stuff down here, turn it into a bit of a business on the internet. I'm absolutely dreading that, to be honest. Um, not so much because she's using the space for dolls, but because if that happens, I'm never going to see it. Like, there's no way, you know, she'll be downstairs in this, in our dingy little room filled with plastic dolls, worrying about what people half a world away want to buy. So this uh, Amea, the, my Japanese doll, that's what we're putting on for cover doll in August? Yeah, that's right, yeah, always. Do you think it's important to have her in a kimono, or, or is there something else I could... I, know, I think it's important to keep her reasonably, traditionally dressed if possible. Use your imagination. Which one do you think looks Japanese? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, that was kind of neat. In a way, collecting dolls or just something special. It's you know something you can touch and feel, and they're 3D. They're there. So I'm counting on you to know how to put these on. <laughs> this is like a Rubik's cube here. I'm wait, wait, wait. I think that would be the crotch, wouldn't it? They tend to add a little bit of magic to to one's life. Okay. Uh, this is supposed to be the right size. These look too short to me. Does the hoop part go on the bottom to hold things up, or does it go on the top to hold things down? You got a set of instructions for this? Okay. Oh, man. This doesn't open in the back, is that it? It doesn't open at all. Oh, yes, it does. There's a zipper there. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm going to take the head off, and that way we can get the clothing on her. You know something? I think we're going to have to bring it on from the bottom, from my experience. I don't think that's going to clear her hip. Push them together again? Oh, I can feel like going. What you see with Dave is what you get. I'm, sh I'm sweating too. I'm just wondering if maybe I should open a window. So, midlife crisis, what's that? I feel like I'm just really starting out in life. So, hmm, yeah. man, there's so much left to experience. Yeah. I'm looking at her panties. Not quite modest enough. Life has to go like this. As soon as you let life go this way, then uh, what's the point of living? Here's to long term friendship. Long term. And full cups of sake. And full cups. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> yeah. uh. Just a second. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still trying to savor the first one. <laughs> I like everything I bought. I'm happy that I got these things. I'm able to now redress another doll. The collection is growing, and it grows um, all the time. Space is always a factor. So in order to get more dolls in, I would have to get rid of some. But I, I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I couldn't pick which ones stay and which ones go. You know, if I get ruthless, I could just throw out a lot of stuff. You know, it sets me back. But, you know, something might sit here for years, and then all of a sudden I think of a fabulous use for it. But a lot of stuff just sits here till I throw it out, you know? It's either the dolls or, for instance, my marriage or the fact that I don't have any money left. It's a choice, you know? She sees it, and that's it. Has to have it. Has to have it straight away, instantly, no matter what. Doesn't matter how much it costs. Doesn't matter if we have to eat beans on toast for three weeks. It's like being a drug addict, I'd imagine. I don't want to be alone with dolls. As much as I love dolls, I don't want to be alone with dolls. It's endless when you start cutting up dolls and making stuff out of them. But I'm driven. It's actually way beyond, you know, the robot movie. I make robots that are never even intended to be in the movie, but they are animation ready. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, I don't have a, a vision of the future. The reason I help with Debbie and her photo shoots is just because, I don't know, I worry about her being lonely. 
I just picture her as this really lonely woman wandering around these lonely places, doll in hand. You know, it's really upsetting. Because I wish that she had more people to do things with. You know, I wish that whatever it was that she wishes was different about her life, I wish that she had it. I don't know, maybe I was still a child. <laughs> I have Peter Pan syndrome. <laughs> At one point, I wish that I had tried it on my own, but home's where I belong. I have overindulged. You know, I, I've gone to the ice cream parlor and I've tried every kind of ice cream there is there. I think I'd like to have another butter brittle because I really like that, but I'd like to try this chocolate marshmallow. And uh, right now I've been working towards one of every doll. Am I happier with more dolls than less dolls? I think so, because I like the variety. I don't have one car in my garage. I have two cars, right? It's a different kind of ride. <laughs> you know, the sex life of robots is a potentially embarrassing project, but I don't give a shit. I'm, I'm willing to be embarrassed, you know? What else am I going to do? Should I make some like, little bunny cartoon, you know? <laughs> I think my life's pretty good. I've got everything that I wanted. I really wanted to have children, and I really wanted to have a husband. And I've got that, and now it's like, I just want loads of dolls, but I need more money. <laughs> I am sort of stuck in the robot pattern. You never know, this movie may never even get finished. You know, because of the non-design of it, we'll end up just as a fragmentary thing.